Hi guys, Hayes here. I'm an artist and speed painter from Malaysia and I noticed that my recent tutorials for the digital painting on Procreate iPad has been doing quite well so today I would just like to give some tips on how to do um, portrait in Procreate app and let's go and get started but before that please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and also subscribe to my Instagram at Hayes Long also follow me on Facebook as well and you can also shop for my products and my art at HayesLong.com thank you so much okay so let's head into the 10 tips for portrait drawing on Procreate iPad um, the first tip is we should always solve one problem at a time so the what I mean by one problem at a time is we don't want to solve the drawing the accuracy of the drawing and the tonal values as well and the color all in one go because that would just give us a lot of trouble and mistakes and that would just delay the whole process so what we want is to isolate each problem and solve each one separately so the first step to drawing is always to tackle the drawing first so get the sketch right get the anatomy and the drawing right and before you move on to the next stage for the next stage we should only focus on the tonal values tonal values means the light and darkness of the painting and usually it is done in grayscale so once we have the grayscale ready we can then focus on tackling the next problem which is color for coloring then we can then control how much color that we want to put in because the less color that we paint on then it means that the grays will be showing not everything is at full strength i mean when you put red you don't want like chili red you know sometimes it's a bit of a grayish red and our face tends to have a lot of gray tones so they're all neutrals so in this way by starting out with a gray scale first and then only moving on to the color stage it will actually help us in isolating the problem and tackle the final stage of the coloring process easier once we have a model our face and then colored our face we can then finally move on to effects which are like highlights and like glitter makeup and whatever that you want to add on tattoos and that those kind of things but before that we should always focus on the accuracy of the drawing the values and the color after that Tip 2. Gradients are your best friend when it comes to doing the grayscale because um, this is only for a portrait yeah. because our skin here, they have very soft tones and by getting the gradients correct, we can actually quickly model a face out. So think, think about um, painting the face like you apply makeup. First, you contour in the shadow and then the highlights and then everything is just very soft. Use a very soft brush like an airbrush kind of brush. All the brushes that I mentioned in this tutorial will be in the description link below. Tip 3 is always always start from shadow to mid-tone to highlights. So never go around like shadow then to highlight then to mid-tone then back to like shadow and then highlight again. Always have the three step which is shadow, mid-tone and then highlights. So this is actually very crucial because as we paint, we tend to jump tones a lot. So by having a step-by-step -step process, it may actually make it easier for us to tackle the problem. So when you start with um, shadow, we never ever use black. We always use like off black, maybe like the eighth eighth uh, value or something like that but never ever black and then we can gradually uh, increase the lightness of it to seven then to six then to five which is mid-tone and then slowly up to maybe a three and we never ever use white as well because we want to reserve the blacks and whites for our final stages which is actually the effect stage right Tip number four is to increase the tonal value gradually so let's say we have like 10 values right like from black is 10 and then one is like white right so we don't want to like 10 jump to like 7 to a 3 and then back to like 8 and then like a 6 always just one step at a time if we start from 8 then we go to 7 6 5 4 3 we don't jump like from 8 to like 5 to 3 the reason why i recommend this tip is because the face has very little values maybe about three values only but then they have there are very a lot of graduations little little graduations in between the values that we need to get right that which is why I recommended the soft brush so there is not a lot of values going on for the face even if it's harsh lighting the, sh the car shadow would just be like a plain block of like maybe a, a, a value itself which leads to tip number five 
we need to prepare our palette beforehand. So if you see here, I have already prepared a plain grayscale palette followed with a warm grayscale palette and also a cool grayscale palette that I can switch back and forth whenever I paint and I never jump so I have all the tan values here already. And then I also have my skin tones palette ready which I picked up from photos that I see or paintings that I see and I just get their shadow mid-tone and highlights and some of the um, off colors that I think is important like the lips or the color of the highlight of the blusher and everything. Also, I have this here is a highlight palette of every single color in the spectrum. I have them in very, very close value to white. So I can just use them to highlight instead of using white, which gives it a lot more uh, realistic result. Yeah. The next tip, tip number six, is to think about soft edges and hard edges. So just now when I was mentioning about the face and you should use a soft brush to um, shade in the values, that is actually a soft edge, which is like blended edge. Blended edge and soft edge are the same thing. So soft edges are nice and all, but you can't use them for the entire portrait because it, there won't be any details, right? So we need to have hard edges at places where it counts. So examples of where you should use hard edges are highlights and details where you just sketch in the details without blending at all. So blending only can take you so far and you have to think about balancing your soft edge and your hard edge. You can also allocate the hard edges for uh, regions that you want people to focus their attention on. So that is a great tip. Okay, when you start the colouring process, um, I'm going to introduce to you this tip 7 which is moving gradually from orange to red then yellow. So you always start with an orange tint and then once you have the orange tint all over, you can start using reds. Reds for the lips, for the blusher, for the tear ducts, for the fingertips and ears. So the fingertips and the ears and the nose are the places where um, light scatters a lot because the, the skin is very translucent and because of that, there's a lot of blood vessels that are showing through. So these are the places that you should um, concentrate your reds on. And then for the highlights, you should be careful because sometimes they are either yellow or bluish. So you can um, follow the situation and then just use yellow or blue for the highlights. Tip number eight is to practice face features in your own style. So for example, for me, I have, I'm, I've been practicing my eyes and my lips because I want to have a certain effect um, over highlights and then lots and lots of glitter and everything. I want to increase the specularity of the, the modeling as well. So I've been practicing and doing demos and finding references that are similar to this style that I want to achieve. So if you want to achieve something, let's say for your hair or for your hands or for your nose, you should always practice them first and keep them as a reference so that whenever you draw a portrait, you can always refer back and use um, the modeling that you did before to apply to your current portrait which would be great because you get to understand the anatomy a lot more. Like if you, for example, if you have difficulty drawing hands or noses or ears, so you can always practice those first and get that sorted out first before you uh, tackle a full portrait. Tip number nine, the second last tip is to leave the effects for last. Effects are like highlights where you can finally use white or very, very close tint close to white. And also you can use your do and you can do your makeup, your tattoos, and your effects. You can also throw in like um, as atmospheric effects and textures and things like that to to bring out the to bring out to bring your painting to the next level. Because a painting can can only take you so far if you keep copying it in a realistic style. So the way to set yourself apart from other artists is in your finishing touches and your style. So your finishing touches, if you can figure out a way to complete the painting in your style, then that would really be your signature whenever you paint. 
And the last tip, tip number 10, is to refine details in areas that matters only. So this, you have to first decide the focus point of the painting. Maybe it's just in the eyes. So for the eyes, you can spend a long time trying to refine the details for these eyes. And then for the rest, like the neck or the nose, you can just be a little bit more painterly and abstract and then use less strokes so that it gives it a more spontaneous and flowy approach to it. Also, it will drive the attention towards the eyes which you are trying to draw the focal point towards too. So, these are all the 10 tips and I hope you enjoy this time-lapse video that I shared with you today. Um, let me know if you have any requests that you want to learn and let me know what videos you want to see from this channel um, in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time. Bye!